Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are pretty much through the first night of free agency, sitting at 11.17 p.m. right now. We haven't had too many big moves recently, and I think we're probably coming to the close. I think one question we all need to be asking ourselves right now is, what in the world are the Detroit Pistons doing? However, before I get too far into this, I want to remind you to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Remember, helps you out because you get all the all the basketball content right there in your subscribed, uh, whatever it's called, thingy, menu, whatever. And it helps me out because I get the extra support. So, win-win for both of us. Go ahead and subscribe. Without further ado, let's talk about the Detroit Pistons as much as I hate to. <laughs> this team just doesn't seem to have a direction. Uh, going into the offseason, they hired uh, Troy Weaver to be their new general manager, president of basketball operations, whatever it is, the title. Uh, and I thought there was a chance that he would come in and do a great job with this roster. Uh, he came in, came from Oklahoma City, which is a team that's currently going through a teardown. I thought that the Pistons could similarly go through a teardown, trade away to any, any veterans of any significance that could get you any trade value. I liked the Luke Kennard trade for them. I think that getting Sadiq Bey out of that trade was a great deal for them. I think that Sadiq has a chance to blossom into a really solid player moving forward, and I think that he complements uh, Killian Hayes, their other first-round pick, really, really well. They also made the trade with the Rockets, where they got the 16th pick for a super well-protected first-round pick for like the next eight years. So while it does hinder the Pistons' chances of trading a first-round pick anytime soon, I also didn't think that they were in a position where they would want to trade a first-round pick because I thought that they were a rebuilding team. I, after that, uh, I kind of liked their selections. I thought Killian Hayes was one of the better picks that they could have gone with with the seventh pick. I would have preferred Tyrese Maxey per personally. I think that Tyrese Halliburton would have been a solid option, but I actually think Hayes was a better option for them since he has uh, higher upside. And I think that he fits the ro he fit the roster better than a guy like Devin Vassell or I can't even think of who else was on the board at that point, like Denny Avdia. I think Denny would have been a solid pick too, but I, I wasn't disappointed with them for taking Killian. The Isaiah Stewart was pick was a bit of a reach for me. I think that they would have been a better off taking Sadiq at 16 and him at 19, but it did end up working out. They got Sadiq Bey at 19. They still got Isaiah, they got Isaiah Stewart at 16. He's supposed to be a really high character guy. I think that he's a really solid player, really good in the post on offense, solid rim protector on defense. Needs to develop some mobility and continue to improve his jump shooting. But if he can do that, there's a chance that this guy really sticks as a solid uh, option as a starting center. But then it started to get weird. Yesterday, they traded Tony Snell for Dwayne Dedman. Oh, Tony Snell and Kyrie Thomas. And that was like, okay, well, so far the only big they have is Isaiah Stewart. Maybe they aren't going to re-sign Christian Wood and you bring in Dwayne Dedman to be like a veteran option at the center position. Tony Snell is a wing and they just added Trevor Ariza. They just added Sadiq Bey. They have Svi Mikhailuk. Maybe this was uh, an example of two guys that are similar values, and you're getting a guy that helps you out a bit more positionally. Well, then we get to tonight, and all of a sudden the Pistons are obsessed with signing centers. We see them give Mason Plumley a terrible value deal. I wouldn't have given Mason Plumley more than two seasons, and I would have probably tried to tack a team option onto the second season. I wouldn't have given him more than six million dollars, so maybe eight million or eight and a third million isn't too egregious of a number to give him. But nonetheless, I think it was a little too much, and giving it to him for three years without an option, I don't think maybe there is a team option for the last year, but. It's crazy talk. I mean, Mason Plumley doesn't profile as much better than a backup center. If you've heard me talk 
like I said about Jalen Smith. You don't use assets like this on backup centers. And this is too big a deal to pay Mason Plumlee to be a backup center. No, maybe he's going to be their starting center for next season. And based off their current route of management, maybe that is the direction they want to go in and start Plumlee next year. But overall, it just didn't make a lot of sense to me, that move. And then they add Jaheel Okafor uh, for a two-year minimum. Not too big a deal. I thought it was a little weird because you only get so many roster spots and adding a fourth center, or no, fifth center, because they had Deadman, they had Isaiah Stewart, they had Mason Plumlee, and they had Tony Bradley, who they acquired in that trade with the Jazz. Also, I want to bring up, I thought that was a pretty solid trade. Like, you give up future considerations to take on Tony Bradley, a still young former first-round pick that could develop into a solid center, and you get the 38th pick. I thought that was a good deal for the Pistons. And they took Saban Lee, which I think was a bit of a stretch. And they gave him a two-way, which seems really weird because you took him in the 30s. And why not just bring him on to be like a backup point guard type or at least a third point guard on your roster? Get him some NBA experience. But I digress. I thought that was a solid move. And then... um. Oh, so yeah, they've got all these centers on their roster. Stewart, Plumlee, Bradley, Ogafor, Deadman. And then they sign Jeremy Grant to one of the more egregious numbers that I have seen in a long time. I had Jeremy Grant in my head as a guy who is pretty well worth the mid-level exception and not much more. I get it. He looked great on the court throughout the playoffs. But if you dig into the numbers, the Nuggets were significantly better with him off the court than they were with him on it. And while I usually don't trust him plus minus because it is a big impact of who you're on the court with, in the playoffs, you're only playing like eight, maybe nine guys in your rotation. So you're out there surrounded by the best players on your team at all times. And the fact that Jeremy Grant had the worst on-off impact of any Nugget, was a warning sign to me. I also think that his defensive impact is a bit overrated. I don't think that he does as good of a job as a lot of people think. He definitely fights, but he's not quite strong enough to guard those big wings like Kawhi Leonard, like LeBron James, although he did have some good moments on them. I don't think that he's a stopper like some people have pegged him to be. And on offense, he doesn't do anything to create for himself or teammates. He's pretty much just a spot-up shooter who can finish dunks and layups off of Nikola Jokic feeds and transition dunks. So I don't think he's going to do well. Apparently, he wanted to leave Denver to take on a bigger offensive role. Well, there's a reason why he didn't have a large offensive role to begin with in Denver. He's just not that good of an offensive player. Adding him means that it's going to take away minutes from Sadiq Bey on the wing, which I don't love because I really think that this team should have been looking to rebuild, but now it's looking like they want to make the playoffs. You've got good veteran players like Derrick Rose, Blake Griffin, Jeremy Grant, Mason Plumlee. Like those are guys that are playoff rotation players. But then you also have the young guys like Killian Hayes, Sadiq Bey, Siku Dumboya, Isaiah Stewart, Zanin Musa. And you just wonder, what is this team doing? What direction do they want to go in? Are they trying to make the playoffs and rebuild at the same time? Why did they give up every single second round pick that they possibly could in order to free up the cap room to sign Jeremy Grant and trade for Sadiq Bey? Why did they... Oh, what's what else have they... Oh, the whole stretch preservation thing with... Um, that guy, well, obviously Dwayne Dedman, but then also the other guy that they acquired in the trade with the Clippers, his name is slipping my mind right now, um, Rodney Magruder, right as I started looking it up, it came back to me, so, uh, they stretch Rodney, Rodney Magruder, they stretch Dwayne Dedman, and now they're gonna have three million dollars of dead money on their cap every single season, was it worth it, Pistons? You're going to compete for the 8th seed. Was it worth it? I mean, 
<laughs> it's an intriguing roster. I'm kind of excited to see what they can do. Because you can put together a rotation of like Derrick Rose, Killian Hayes, Svi Mikhailuk, Jeremy Grant, Sadiq Bey, Blake Griffin, Sekou Dumboya. Well, maybe Sekou isn't ready to play in the playoffs, but Isaiah Stewart, Mason Plumley, Like, there's some intriguing names on this roster, and it's an interesting balance between young guys and old guys. Maybe they think they can be the thunder of last year where you start your rebuild and and also make the playoffs, but the difference is that the Thunder had stockpiled first-round picks. This Pistons team, they have their own first-round picks, and that's about it. They also got rid of every single second-round pick they, they own, so that's a bunch of teams that are probably going to be getting a pick between 31 and 40 for the next seven years. So overall, this just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I mean, why couldn't you just embrace the rebuild? Why not re-sign Christian Wood? No Mason Plumley deal. No, well, Jaheel Okafor is fine. It's just a minimum. But no Mason Plumley. No Jeremy Grant. No stretch provision stuff with Dwayne Dedman. Don't trade for Dwayne Dedman. Hang on to Tony Snell. He can be a solid option for you on the wing. Just uh, re-sign Christian Wood. You've got some solid building blocks for the future. Killian Hayes. Svi Mikhailuk. Sadiq Bey. Sekou Dumboya, Isaiah Stewart, Christian Wood. Like, those are good young players. Even Zan and Musa, if he ends up working out, that guy's pretty intriguing because he's really confident. He likes just chucking up 30-foot three-pointers for no reason. So if he ends up working out and taking advantage of all that length he has, he can be a really fun offensive player. So overall, there's so, there's some good young talent on this team. But I just don't get what they're doing. They don't have a direction. Like, why make these moves to get three first-round picks and get some young guys that I really like if they're not even going to be in your rotation next year? What's the point in signing Mason Plumley? Is he going to start over Isaiah Stewart? Is he even that much better than Isaiah? And is he worth that $25 million deal that he got? Like, oh, I am happy I am not a Pistons fan. Crispy Flakes must be going crazy right now. I mean, Jeremy Grant is good, but he's not worth $20 million annually. And that's really probably what they're going to try to sell their fans on. Like, hey, we signed this guy. We're going to go to make the playoffs again like we did two years ago and continue to be a team with no direction, just drifting around in the who cares land of the NBA. And letting Christian Wood go was not a good move either. Like... You put together Mason Plumley and like the extra money they took on by swapping Tony Snell for uh, Dwayne Dedman and the Jaheel Okafor minimum, all that money, you stick it all together and you've probably got the, what was it, four, three years, 41 million Wood got from the, from the Rockets. You could have easily outbid that and hung on to one of your more intriguing young guys, but instead you're stuck with aging veterans on overpriced contracts. Yeah, I give the the Pistons like a D- minus for today. I think that this is one of the worst days of free agency for any singular team that I can remember. And I just wonder what's going to end up happening with this team because it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Let me know in the comments section what you think the Pistons are doing. Because uh, <laughs> I, I certainly don't know, so maybe you can enlighten me. <laughs> oh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed make fun of the pistons in the comments uh that's it for me ladies and gentlemen see you all again very soon